This Ridley O is sponsored by friends of BitcoinStore.com. I was watching a documentary about one of the Saudi princes the other day, and that's when I realized that I like monarchs better than politicians. It's not that this prince was all that great, it's just that I realized he wasn't at fault for being a prince. He was just born that way. Monarchy is a little bit like a crapshoot. It's random. Leaders are selected by the accident of birth. They don't get the, to the top necessarily. They don't get. They don't become royal at least by being the most psychopathic, good liar. That's the way it works in democracies, republics, or whatever you want to call them. There, the scum rises to the top. According to radicalroyalist.blogspot.com, which I guess is actually quoting Reporters Without Borders, eight of the top 13 uh, freest countries, in terms of press freedom, are monarchies. What is arguably becoming the freest country in the world is a monarchy, Iceland. I didn't even know that. Oh, wait, no, that's not quite accurate. I believe it stopped being a monarchy in uh, the 40s. But anyway, it's hard to name a monarchy that's really as bad as it gets in terms of government. Most of the really, really bad governments are not monarchies. Maybe the worst monarchy I can think of would be Saudi Arabia, but even it has very many saving graces. People are pretty wealthy there. The country's fairly wealthy. You could say that it's had fair amount of stability for a long time. The king seems pretty corrupt and blah. But a lot of awfulness has come from the Saudi royal family. But the most awfulness to come from Saudi Arabia is almost always from opponents of the royal family. At least in terms of non-state terrorism. Anyway, the Saudi government is not really defensible, but I can't help but have a soft spot for the... Uh, uh, soldier prince Bandar, who uh, seems to be a pretty straight talker. He once said, uh, in a in a you know republic or a democracy, you have to be careful because if you're not if you're not careful, you'll lose office. He said, if we're not careful, if we don't treat our people halfway decently, we'll lose our heads. The Saudi kingdom is probably a lot like the old French kingdom, which was terrible. But when you look back at what replaced it. It didn't look so bad anymore. They used to say, uh, G.K. Chesterton used to say, the French monarchy was like a mountain. You couldn't move it, but you could sprawl all over it. And the amount of access people had to their monarchy was pretty impressive uh, in, in the uh, days of the French monarchy. And it is the same way in Saudi Arabia, again, which is probably the worst monarchy, <laughs> or, you know, one of the worst. Uh, in Saudi, uh, you can... You can meet with your prince without an appointment, like your royal governor. Uh, it's like it's a little bit like in New Hampshire. It's not that difficult to meet with the governor in New Hampshire without an appointment. It can be done, but in Saudi Arabia, it's uh, you know a governor runs about the same number of people that the governor of, of of New Hampshire runs, right? And they're essentially required to meet with the people every day, or at least maybe it's every week. Well, no, I guess it has to be every day or every weekday at least, since uh, there's no appointment. I watched video of this, and the prince who was doing it didn't really seem to care very much about the people, but he was at least going through the motions of meeting with them. Look, when the end comes for that regime, if it does, in our lifetime, it will probably be a, a, a cruel and bloody process that will result in the destruction of a third of the buildings <laughs> that it owns. I would guess you'd be looking at 100,000 deaths and a replacement regime that's even worse. Maybe. And that's what happened in Egypt, where things went pretty well, overall. I mean, sometimes I'm playing online video games, and people will inform me that one of my players is missing because he's on the streets in Cairo. One out of six people in Cairo apparently hit the streets recently. So, I mean, the people have really got... They're, they, they're very powerful in, in Egypt compared to most places, and capable. Uh, and still things have gone... Well, they could have gone a lot better since 2011. Great revolutions followed by bad governments. 
what's going to happen if you have a bad revolution, which seems more likely in Saudi Arabia. Anyway, think about it. Liechtenstein, Sweden, Thailand. It's not monarchies that are really so bad. It's empires. And sometimes when you look at republics like North Korea, it's republics. Saddam's Iraq, Assad's Syria, the so-called republics of the Soviet Union. I used to think, what would I do if I were a monarch, and, but I think the way that I currently do about things? Uh, you know, like if I were born into it or whatnot. I guess if I were born that way, I would have wound up thinking differently from the way I think. But let's just say that I, I was transported into a monarch's body, you know, at age, who's age, you know, 16 or 18 or something like that. What I do with that? Well, I don't think you could do much uh, for liberty as a monarch. So the obvious thing to do, assume I was a prince or something like that, the obvious thing to do would be to gain a little bit of fame and attention, which would be pretty easy, I guess, in many cases, especially if you were like a British monarch, uh, royal or whatever. And then abdicate everything. Stop being a prince or whatever, you know. <clears throat> and I guess you can do that. I mean, mostly it's you know it's kings and queens that abdicate, but maybe a prince can do it. And then I would flee to New Hampshire, <clears throat> or maybe I would flee first and uh, use my notoriety to draw attention to what we're doing in New Hampshire. It would change the effect. It would change history. Actually, that's what any monarch could do if they wanted to. Pretty much any royal, I guess I should say. Although some of the more obscure that you've never heard of wouldn't have as much of an impact. Oh, by the way, I just noticed the, the, the British royal family costs taxpayers uh, 41 million pounds a year. And that doesn't include most of the security they get. So it is an abomination. <laughs> it's just less of an abomination than Obamination. It's Ridley O. Sponsored by Friends of... BitcoinStore.com